The San Antonio Spurs would have been ahead of the curve in their rebuild if back in 2018, President and Coach Greg Popovich would have accepted the LA Lakers reported offer of Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball in exchange for Kawhi Leonard. Instead, the franchise which dominated in the Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker era accepted an offer for an all-star in DeMar DeRozan, but Debo would pack his bags for Chi-Town in free agency. The Spurs still have a mid-tier center in Jakob Pertl remaining from that Kawhi Leonard trade, but after losing DeJounte Murray to Atlanta and Lonnie Walker to LA, the Spurs roster overhaul is only beginning to take shape. It's going to be a long road for fans in the Alamo, but despite being destined for the lottery, there's still hope for the future after drafting a smooth, multi-talented combo forward in the Baylor Bear, Jeremy Sohan, who should fit nicely next to a player who's due for a breakout 2023 season in Keldon Johnson. Giving optimistic fans slight hope their beloved Spurs can shock the world and exceed expectations. But this video puts the future and past into perspective for the five-time championship winning organization from the Alamo City. Before that, just 8.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe. Thanks the world to all of those who've already done so. To support my channel, leave a thumbs up on this video, and to stay tuned for highlights on the go, make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. It's only a matter of time before Spurs draft robbery from 2019, the 29th overall pick from that year's class in Keldon Johnson, develops into an all-star. After the product of Kentucky finished his third season at the pro level in San Antonio with averages of 17 points, 6.4 rebounds, on an efficient shooting split of 47% from the field, 40% from three-point range, and 75% from the free throw line, the Spurs extended him through 2026-27 on a four-year, $80 million contract. Whether or not he deserved that deal is coming up. And we'll also look at a player who could potentially have a Draymond Green type impact for the Spurs culture. Before that, we'll be quickly looking at San Antonio's history. The Iceman George Gervin era is the time frame the Spurs will be honoring with their new classic edition threads in 2022-23. It's the team's 50th anniversary, a history which has seen San Antonio become the fifth most successful franchise among all 30 teams. The championship rings they've won only trail the Boston Celtics, Minneapolis slash LA Lakers, Chicago Bulls, and Philadelphia slash Golden State Warriors. Considering San Antonio's rings were fueled by quiet, thought of as unmarketable top players like David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and Kawhi Leonard, San Antonio being right next to those historic franchises I just mentioned may have taken you by surprise. Because for capturing a dominant five titles in the span of 15 years, ranging from 1999 until 2014, the Spurs have failed to get the respect they deserved in either the mainstream, YouTube, or traditional media. Considering the Alamo is the seventh largest city in the US, it's strange that the Spurs have been labeled as a small market organization. With that said, while San Antonio has a historical advantage over their in-state rivals, the Dallas Mavericks, as of right now, this Spurs team is evidently the much weaker squad between their Texas counterpart. Instead of thinking about winning another title, it's disappointing that the all-time winningest head coach in the history of the NBA in Popovich will have his final task be to develop the next wave of talent in this organization. In some sense, it's good that the new influx of players get to learn from a legend. In another sense, many feel that Coach Pop's time to step down as the man in charge should have came several years ago at this point. Regardless, with All-Stars leaving San Antonio in consecutive off-seasons now, in DeRozan last year and Murray this year, it's time to not merely rebuild the core from ground zero, but to rebuild the entire culture from top to bottom. Whether or not you can do that with Popovich there remains to be seen, but it's not like the Spurs ownership is going to initiate the parting of ways with their legendary coach. Let's change focus and move on to the factors which the San Antonio fanbase can look forward to. My player comparison for Keldon Johnson is next, but I first wanted to cover the number 9 overall pick from 2022's NBA Draft in Jeremy Sohan. Introducing the backbone for the San Antonio Spurs as the versatile big man who could play both ends of the floor at power forward or the center spot is coming off a couple dominant showings in the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. On college basketball's biggest stage, 
Sohan posted 15.9 rebound averages, displaying his polished footwork and perimeter jump shooting. For a near 7-footer, the man's poise to maintain balance and mental toughness on highly contested jumpers is a main reason the Spurs took him ninth overall. Jeremy's 6'9", 230-pound frame allows him to see over the top of the defense and set up teammates with naturally gifted passing chops. Sohan's point-forward based playing style is perfect for the modern NBA. Before playing at Baylor, the now 19-year-old played at the under-16 FIBA tournament, given his Polish background allows him to play for the national team. Making a long story short, Sohan dominated that U16 tourney, leading Poland to a gold medal while becoming tournament MVP. Usually a regular with his national team, Sohan's so committed to the Spurs season that he skipped competing in the Eurobasket to focus on being a rookie in the NBA. Jeremy was one of, if not the most underrated talent from 2022's draft class. Sohan's handle off the dribble allows him to gain unstoppable downhill momentum off the bounce, then make crafty finishes at the hoop. Jeremy's game is based around skill, not athleticism, which always helps a point forward to develop his game in the NBA. On the topic of progression, Keldon Johnson's done just that, annually expanding his repertoire throughout his first three seasons. Limited to 17 games as a rookie, KJ's three-point percentage would fall off by the time he became a sophomore, but thankfully that deep range mark would fly right back up to an elite 40% mark in 2022. On a career high by far, 5.3 triples attempted per game. With a blistering first step, unafraid contact finishing at the bucket, that three-point shot forces defenders to press up and allows Keldon to get as much space as he wants at the hoop. There's a long way to go before KJ's a three-level scorer who's able to carry a team, but being the Spurs' second option behind DeJounte Murray in 21-22 will be experience that Keldon benefits off. The bodies that Keldon can catch on poster jams, strength that he has to bump off defenders in the lane, resembles a young Kawhi Leonard. I'm predicting it'll be a rough season, but it'll be another valuable season of development, and with a 2023 draft pick, who knows, the Spurs could be right back in the mix. What's most intriguing about the Spurs in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, what's going to make or break the Mavericks in 2023? Kent Saludo gets the shoutout for saying Christian Wood. It's clear that Wood is a talented player, but he's always injured. If he can't stay healthy or doesn't buy into the offense, then this will not work at all. We all know how great Luka is, and he is good enough to give them a playoff spot, but it's a lot different in the playoffs. Losing Brunson, who's the Mavs' second best player last year, hurts them, and C. Wood needs to step up his game.